Hey everyone, Brandon Lee from Virtualization How To, and today we're diving into a detailed review of the TrigKey S7 Pro Mini PC. And this is a compact little mini PC that's, I think, nearly perfect for running VMware ESXi and Proxmox in your home lab. So let's get started. Let's dive into the specs. The TrigKey S7 Pro is built around the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS processor, which is part of the Zen 3 family. Now, this processor boasts eight cores, 16 threads, and a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz. It can turbo boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. And one of the things I really like about this processor compared to Intel variants is the uniform processor architecture. Now, unlike the Intel hybrid architecture with the P&E cores, the AMD processors are the standard CPU architecture with uniform cores. And I think this just makes for less complexity with hypervisors and scheduling your workloads. Uh, you're not having to enter boot parameters such as those you have to enter with VMware ESXi or install microcode updates for Proxmox. So it's just simpler. Now, moving on to the graphics, the S7 Pro includes a 12-core AMD Radeon graphics chip capable of driving high-resolution displays. It sports the capability for triple display configurations via the HDMI, DisplayPort, and Type-C ports. Each of those are capable of outputting 4K video at 120 or 144 Hz, which is adequate for visual design work or high-definition streaming. Now, in terms of memory, the unit supports DDR5 RAM with speeds up to 5600 megahertz. Although it's officially supported up to 64 gigs of DDR5, we all know with DDR5 you can get away with 96 gigs of memory. Now for home labs and running server type workloads, you're going to greatly benefit from that additional memory up to 96 gigs. The storage configuration is also interesting with the TrigKey S7 Pro. You've got some flexibility with this unit, either with a two and a half inch SATA SSD slot, or interestingly, that can be configured with an M.2 connector. And this allows for a blend of capacity or speed depending on what your needs are. Now, let's talk about connectivity for a moment. This uh, S7 Pro features uh, many I.O. ports for its size. You've got two USB 3.2 ports uh, that allow for rapid data transfer speeds to external devices. You have two USB 2.0 ports for standard peripherals. And then also, uh, you've got a single RJ45 port that supports 2.5 gig Ethernet. And that, we know, is pretty much the standard. In, home lab configurations these days. It allows a mix of both the traditional speeds as well as that multi-gig uh, speed that you can benefit from running server workloads. And also it supports wake on LAN, wake on power, and those are really great features to have in something that you're gonna use for a home lab or mini server setup. Uh, since you can remotely power manage the device. Wireless connectivity isn't left behind either with the S7 Pro. Uh, it has Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, speeds up to 2400 megabits per second, and Bluetooth 5.2 for uh, connecting with modern wireless accessories. So let's take a look at some of the unboxing picks that I took while setting the unit up in the lab. Now first you'll see the TrigKey S7 Pro is boxed really well. I, I thought the packaging was very high quality, uh, rigid boxing material, uh, all of which you would hope to see in a mini PC that's packaged and sent to you. So I thought TrigKey did a good job there. Uh, in the second pick, we see after I took the lid off, you can see the instruction manual, inner packaging for the S7 Pro. And then as we get the plastic wrap off, you see the S7 Pro unit um, and you can see the, the build quality is really nice, the uh, fit and finish uh, really nice with the unit. And then now we look at the back of the unit with the two and a half gig LAN port, the USB-A port, the USB-C port, display port, HDMI port and power connector. Now moving around to the front of the unit, you'll see the uh, two USB-A ports, another USB-C port, and a headphone jack along with the power button. As we flip the unit to the underneath side of the unit, uh, you will see the model, serial number, and other information stamped on the bottom along with this perforated holes in the bottom for 
uh, better airflow. And the design of this unit is really akin to a lot of the B-Link mini PCs I've seen as well. Now, after we remove the bottom cover, you'll see the SSD compartment. Here you'll notice that the compartment is large enough for a two and a half inch SSD, but interestingly, the unit that I was sent had an M.2 connector and the screw support for the M.2 drive. However, it looks to be that this is optional perhaps, and I'm looking to get clarification from TrigKey on that point. Now, after you move the screws for the fan shroud, you're going to uh, gain access to both of the RAM slots as well as that inner M.2 NVMe port that you can use and take advantage of. This final picture is of the TrigKey S7 along with the power adapter as well as the cables to just give you guys a visual of the size comparison of the unit as well as the power adapter. Now let's talk about installation and setup. After setting up another NVMe drive, I proceeded with installing VMware ESXi and Proxmox, and I wanted to test both of these installations. I think that's a lot of what most are installing in the home lab. The process went smooth for both, and that's thanks to the Intel i226V network controller. That's right, an Intel network controller, which seems to be a rare find with these AMD equipped uh, mini PCs. However, uh, both of the installations were very smooth and uh, went through without a hitch, both with VMware vSphere as well as Proxmox. Now let's talk about power consumption with this unit. Uh, and this is a critical factor when you're running a home lab 24 by 7 by 365 perhaps and efficiency can be very important along with performance and the tricky s7 pro mini pc really shines in this area i thought and had a very surprisingly low power draw considering uh, during my test the s7 pro was observed idling at around 9 to 10 watts which is quite modest for a device of its capabilities and I think this low power consumption is also going to be ideal for users who plan on running this unit as a home server that's going to be on 24 hours a day. That energy efficiency is going to uh, definitely have significant cost savings over time. Now, under load, while booting and running various apps and virtual machines, I found the power consumption as well uh, was impressively low uh, with this unit. I had uh, power spikes up to uh, around 45, 50 watts with the unit. Uh, but just as a comparison, the older super micros that you see in the server rack behind me, uh, they run, you know, 12, 15 virtual machines at 80 watts. Uh, and that's kind of a baseline for me to compare, you know, what are these mini PCs actually doing compared to uh, some of the older generation Xeons that I have in the server rack. Now, this efficient power management makes the S7 Pro an excellent choice for users who need a a really powerful mini PC, but are also uh, conscious of the energy consumption and operational costs. Whether you're running a uh, home lab, multiple virtual machines, or you just want to use the S7 Pro as a daily driver, uh, the power consumption, I think, is, is really efficient with this unit. Now, like every device, the Tricky S7 Pro has its strengths and its weaknesses. Now, here are a few of the things that I think are the major pros of the Tricky S7 Pro. Uh, first of all, I really like the fact that this is a uniform processor with AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS processor. So you're not going to have any of the quirks with the uh, performance and efficiency cores that you do with some of the Intel variants. It also has DDR5 5600 megahertz memory. And that means that you can splurge and go up to two 48 gig memory modules for a total of 96 gigs of memory. I think if you're running this as a foundation for a home lab, you're going to benefit from that extra RAM. It has the eight cores, 16 threads, which are great for virtualization, and it has the Intel i226 two and a half gig network adapter. And that gives you the flexibility to install VMware vSphere or Proxmox without, again, without any of the hurdles of drivers or other issues there. It also has the two M.2 NVMe drives. Now I have a bit of a question about this. Are all of these models configured with the M.2 slot in that two and a half inch uh, configuration? I'm not sure if TrigKey is selling the two and a half inch drive bay configuration as well as the M.2 slot. So that is something I'm gonna to try to get some clarification on uh, from TrigKey. Now what about the cons of the TrigKey S7 Pro? Well, one of the things I, I think that will stand out to some is it only has the one network adapter. It is a multi-gig adapter, 
being the two and a half gig ethernet adapter, but it would have been awesome to see two of those on this unit. And I would also say that one of the downsides of this unit is the S7 is not exactly cheap. Uh, I saw it on Amazon with the official links that were sent to me from TrigKey, and it's upper $500. So I think it was $569 the last time I looked on Amazon. So that is not the cheapest mini PC that you can buy, especially for a home lab configuration. But I do think this thing has a great mix capabilities of hardware and some kind of future proofing there. Now, how does this compare to something like the Minis Forum MS-01? Well, the Minis Forum MS-01 has arguably stronger features with the two 2.5 two gig network adapters, the two 10 gig adapters, SFP adapters on the networking side. It also has three NVMe ports internally with the possibility of a U.2 adapter, and it also has the PCIe slot. However, its retail price is $839. Notably though, right now, as I looked, as this video was being made, it can be had for $679 with a discount currently on the official Minis Forum site. So I think they are different hardware. One is Intel with MS-01, and then you have this AMD Ryzen variant. I like the Ryzen processor better than the Intel variants. However, on the networking side of things, as well as the storage side, the MS-01 has the advantage there. However, it is more expensive. So keep those points in mind as you're thinking about uh, a powerful mini PC for home server use cases. Well, let's wrap this up. The Tricky S7 Pro is a really great mini PC, I think, for home labs. It's ideal for users who need a reliable, high-performance mini PC for virtualization tasks or using it as a daily driver. If you're setting up a home lab for either ESXi or Proxbox, I think this could be a perfect choice due to the combination of the AMD Ryzen processor 7840, which is really a performant uh, variant, as well as the Intel networking. Well, thanks for watching this review. If you have any questions or experiences with the TrigKey S7 Pro, drop a comment below. Also check out the virtualization how-to forums where you can get personal help with home lab challenges or projects that you may uh, need help with or just want to bounce some ideas off of the community. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more tech reviews and guides from virtualization how-to. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Keep on home labbing, stay safe out there, and I will see you guys on the next video.